Well, I've been pitching to you a couple people in last week. How many know what I, who I preached about last week? Who, who, what, what's her name? Naomi. Naomi. And how Naomi means, um, her name means pleasantness or, or joy, joyful. But circumstances came in and where she lost everything. Have you ever lost everything? I'm so glad that, that God has things like this and people in the Bible that have suffered loss. Because if not, there is no point of reference for us to even connect. As I just said just moments ago, that's why people walk away. Not that they don't care, but they can't connect. If they've not had that experience, they don't know how to handle that. But I'm so glad that in the Word of God, that, that, that God didn't just get the feel-good Bible. He actually have put real-life circumstances. People who have suffered divorce, people who have lost loved ones, people who have lost jobs, people who have lost homes and cars, and people who did lost, period. I'm so glad that there, there are references in here that we can connect with. But in connecting with that, God is saying that I don't want those things that you have lost, those things that you've encountered, to put and allow the root of bitterness to lodge deep in your soul. So therefore, you're going through life and you look okay, but on the inside, you're broken. And how many times we've walked in this life looking okay, but totally messed up on the inside? Amen. Amen. And in the case of, in the book of Ruth, in the case of Naomi, she endured and endured and endured and then her life circumstances changed. She lost her husband, lost her sons, lost her money, lost everything, lost her home, lost everything. And she allowed her circumstances to change her disposition. And just being, just, uh, just, just utterly transparent with you, I, when I was doing my walk, the Lord was saying, don't let your circumstances change who I created you to be. Don't allow your circumstances to dictate to you and change your disposition. And how many church family can realize that sometimes you can be joyful, you can be happy, but life circumstances can literally change your disposition. Her name was still Naomi, but she chose to call herself out of her name. What can you, can you imagine being so broken that you don't even want to call yourself by your name, that instead of someone else cursing you, you curse yourself? When the women were excited about her, and I told you this last week, and I'm going to move, I'm gonna move on into this. As the women was excited about seeing her return because she heard that God was blessing again. And God was prospering her town again and the people there. They expected her to come back with the same disposition and, and demeanor that she left with. Joyful, pleasant, happy to be around. Instead, she returned. And when they called her name, she said, mm -mm, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, because I'm bitter. And that is the ploy of the enemy to make you bitter when somebody doesn't do what you want them to do, or something doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen, and, and life happens, and circumstances happen. We get bitter, and God is saying, I don't want you bitter, I want you better. I don't want you to let something that's temporary change you to the degree that you will never ever be happy again. He calls us blessed. He calls us redeemed. He calls us victorious. He calls us more than a conqueror. He calls us saved. When you talk about salvation, salvation in the Greek language literally means deliverance. Many times we talk about being saved and giving your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's bigger than just going to heaven. It's bigger than just when we die and we can, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is awesome, but I want to talk to the church people today about salvation and not, not the salvation just in going to heaven and spending eternity in heaven, but I'm asking, are you being saved? And to be saved means you have to be delivered daily. Daily we should ask God, God deliver me. If it's deliver you from you, then say God deliver me from me. If it's deliver me from people, then God deliver me from people. If it's deliverance from habits, then God deliver me from habits. Whatever it is that you need deliverance from, I want you to know that when you say Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. 
Write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Save me, oh God. When you ask God to save you, he didn't just come with eternal salvation. He came with temporal and physical deliverance. And he's saying, I don't just want to save you through all eternity. I want to save you. I want to save you from the world and from the circumstances. I'm not going to shield you from it. But I want to save you. Save you in it, through it. You know, John, the 17th chapter, when Jesus was praying <clears throat> for us and for the, his apostles, for his disciples, he said, I don't just pray for these, talking about the 12 disciples. He said, Father, I, I, I don't just pray for these. It's John in the 17th chapter of St. John. He said, I'm not just praying for these, but I'm praying for all of those who will believe on my name. And then he asked something. He said, I want them to be one like you and I are one. And then he said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. Why? Because God is not trying to shield us from trouble. He wants to deliver us, but he's not trying to shield us from trouble because there are things that we would be brutally honest this morning. There are things that trouble can birth in us, a godly character or strength or stability that can only come through being pushed through trials and tribulations. You'll never learn compassion unless you have gone through something where it would cause your heart to be pliable in God's hands. Hallelujah. Temporal deliverance from danger, apprehension. We've been pardoned. We've been restored. We've been healed. And the part of our salvation this morning I want to talk to you about is soundness. Soundness in our minds. Having a sound mind. Paul said and told Timothy, God has not given you a spirit of fear. But of love, power, and a sound mind. The Amplified says, a well-balanced mind. Anybody need a well-balanced mind so you can look, you can look at your situation objectively? Instead of, instead of letting it look like a boogeyman or a Goliath, God, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to see my life through your eyes from your perspective. Amen? A soundness. So if your soul today is bitter, you can change it. You can change it and ask God to give you a sound mind. Hallelujah. Go with me to Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. We're going to look at some scriptures today. Amen? Hallelujah. Isaiah 61, Praise the Lord. We can have this, saints of God. I'm in the NSAB 61, verses 1 through 3, and it's, it's the exaltation. My Bible actually have a caption that I love. It's the exaltation of the afflicted. This is how you exalt the afflicted. This is how you, this is how you minister to those who are afflicted. It says the spirit of the Lord, and even, even Jesus said it in Luke, you can find the same reference in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, but Isaiah 61 says the spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. And that's what I believe God was asking me today. Go in, Leola, and bind up the brokenhearted. Preach the good news to the afflicted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And freedom to prisoners. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. And I love that because there are times that we do mourn. And it is our job as the church family to comfort one another. Amen. Paul says it in Corinthians that we are to comfort one another with the same comfort that we have received ourselves. 
We don't run when we've gotten our healing and we go off and we leave everybody else behind. It says also to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. God is saying, I want to give that to my church. I want to give that to my body today. And so everything that you and I have encountered, everything that we have gone through, have not been for naught. Even though I wouldn't have chosen it for myself, what I've gone through, what my husband's gone through, what some of you've gone through, I wouldn't have chosen that. But I, I don't know where we got, have, got the misconceived idea that, that just coming to church and being a Christian means that you won't go through anything. Because even Jesus said, in this life, in this world, you're going to have what? Trials and tribulations. You say, why are you preaching about trouble? Because sometimes we find ourselves in the midst of trouble. Why are you preaching about tribulation? Because tribulation means trouble. But he said, but be of good cheer. I've already overcame. So I guess you say, well, what's, what's your objective? My objective today, that what I want to offer you today is simply, do you believe God? Or if you don't, it's time to believe him. Because we have to. We have to make up in our minds that, God, either I'm going to believe your word or not at all. Because you're going to worry yourself or you're going to find yourself, I mean, almost like just whittling down to nothing, to dust. And though he can give you beauty for ashes, it is not his will that we go down to nothing. 